All right, so I'm just thinking out loud and I have to drive, so you're not gonna see my face. Um, Cause I can't, I don't have a, a thing to hold up my camera. So I'm thinking out loud, here's what I'm thinking. I'm thinking that there is only really one conclusion that one can draw when someone leaves a person whose only real crime was to have a panic attack. Not to attack them, not to do anything. I didn't even call him names that day. I did nothing to him. Nothing. I have done nothing to him. And yes, I have the YouTube channel. So what? It's because he wouldn't fucking talk to me. That's why I have the YouTube channel. I was trying to talk. I needed to process. A normal, healthy human being would sit down and say, Hey, uh, I want that Twinkie. I don't want you anymore. That's what my first husband did. It's not pretty, but it's certainly preferable to sneaking away and pretending that that's not the reason why you left. And then when things didn't work out, acting like that's, that was never the reason why he walked away. Okay, I know that that is why he walked away because I remember the moment his behavior changed. I remember exactly what happened and what he did. And it was very, very clear that he suddenly changed. And that's why. It's not because of anything I did. It's not because I am, you know, somehow undesirable because I fucking spoiled him rotten. There was no reason whatsoever for him to leave the love of his life, the girl that he said that he was in love with for three decades, no reason other than it's all bullshit. He never really loved me. And he, was, he just did this whole thing to um, take revenge on me for something I did when I was 17, which is so trifling. Think about it. Think how trifling that is to hold a grudge for three decades and then be like, be still have so much contempt for somebody three decades later that you're going to end up getting with them and then you're going to exact your revenge on them. I mean, no normal, healthy human being does that. Nobody does that. Only really, really sick, twisted people do that. Now, I am one of those people who has a really, really hard time believing that people, that anyone can be completely incapable of love. Because I believe that love is the natural state of things. And so somebody who's not capable of love is unnatural and creepy. And so when his own friends and family told me that he's not capable of love, I thought, wow, that's really unfortunate that, you know, all these people think such terrible things about him. It can't be true. I never really, I mean, it did cause me to pause and kind of look at things, but I mean, I really just was like, wow, that's, that's really cold. But um, unfortunately, they were telling me the truth. That's really, that's really the truth. The truth is that he's not capable of love. And um, there's nothing I can do about it. I can't, you know, it, this has nothing at all to do with me. Because if anyone in this whole wide world could have gone the distance with him, it would have been me. I tolerated everything about him. And he still ran away. I tolerated every. You can't even imagine. There's, there are things 
I have, there are so many things. I know it's because I'm very frank and I'm very brutally honest, but I'm here to tell you there are so many things about him that I have not shared on YouTube because they are so, they would be so humiliating and embarrassing to him if I shared some of the things about him that I tolerated. Really, really humiliating things that I tolerated about him that nobody else in the world is going to tolerate for long. Maybe people will tolerate it for a little while, but eventually they're going to walk away. They're going to be like, whoa, this is too much, dude. I can't do this. I was the only person who would have stuck with him forever. I never would have left him. And so his walking away from me is actually a blessing because he was killing me. He was completely draining the life out of me. I now have to file bankruptcy because of, because of him. I tried so hard to help him, believing in him, believing that he could, he just needed a little boost to get up on his feet and then he could take over the world. That's what I believe. I believed so much in him and I trusted him and there was no, there's only one reason why anyone would walk away from that. Only one reason and that's because he ha has a personality disorder. There's no other reason because I am I was so good to him and I am not the monster that he wants to believe that I am because and that's the other thing too that I've learned is that we um, we who fall in love with narcissists what we are in love with narcissists mirror us that's what they do they mirror us because they don't want us to see the real them because the real them is is dark and unnatural and and um and evil so they mirror who we are so it's said all over the community it's it is pointed out that what we're really falling lo in love with is ourselves conversely what they really hate about us is what we mirror back to them, which is their true self. So he wants to project onto me that I'm this terrible person that doesn't even deserve the courtesy of a conversation when really he's the one that fucked it all up and he's the one that did really evil shit. And now wants to pretend that it's about me and has so much contempt for me that he won't even speak to me. And, you know, that's, that's what no contact is really for. No contact is not to punish the narcissist and no contact is not to, you know, make them remember you and, and come running back to you. No contact is to give you space for the illusion that these people are good people to dissipate. And if you watched my last video, you see how hard it is to let go of that illusion. It is, I mean, I've been talking about it. It's really, really hard to let go of that illusion because it is, it seems so real. But Clearly, it's not real because you get to a point, you have to get to a point with the narcissist and, and it, it happens. It does happen. Just wait for it. You know, it's like those, you know, those, those funny memes where you're like, wait for it, wait for it. And then all of a sudden, oh, <laughs> you, you see it, you know, it's like that with a narcissist. Just wait for it. Wait for it and you'll see it. And that's what's happened with me. I waited you know, I waited for it. I knew in my gut, but in my heart, I still really, really loved him. And I wanted to believe that that's not what he is. 
And so I, I waited and wait, and I loved him and I held a space for him way longer than probably anybody else would have. Um, but, you know, there, it gets to a point where the cruelty is, is just so in your face that there's nothing else, no other conclusion than you, that you can come to except that one. So that's my thinking out loud. Um, I don't know if any of this helped, but I just needed to share that. Thanks.